Thanks. Thanks, guys. That's the last one. We're going to move into the next thing. Um, <clears throat> we've got a couple special guests. You know them very well, but I want to do a special interview where I dive in deep with uh, the man and the woman behind this entire event. So we're going to bring Grant and Elena up here to do a special interview. So give them a round of applause, both of them. Grant and Elena, bring them up here. We, we just did this so we could spend more time with Lewis. I never get enough Shirts time. on. Give this guy a big hand, huh? Come on. I love this guy. Love this guy. Lewis, my favorite interview of any interview I've done in the whole world this is probably going to kill my let. But, <laughs> dude, the interview I did with you, the second one in your house in Hollywood, like, you touched me so deeply. Like, this guy, if you have not seen his podcast where he interviewed me, it literally changed my life, right? Because he asked me some questions. It was like Oprah style. And Elena was there. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, it was fun. So we're going to do, uh, I think we got about, what, 20, 30 minutes? What do you, you tell me how much time we have. Um, I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. And I wanted to ask them some questions that I think might be helpful for you guys that we didn't talk about on the podcast because it was just Grant mostly. Um, but I'd love to hear some of Elena's thoughts as well. Do you guys think this would be interesting for me to dive in a little bit deeper? Yeah? Awesome. So I wanted to ask first, Elena, as I was walking down here thinking of what I was going to ask you, what was it when you first met Grant that made you say, this is a guy that I want to be with? And I think originally you didn't care to be with him. Right. But what was the turning point where you said, I can't live without this guy? I'd like to, I'd like to know what the turnoff was first, because I still don't think I got the well, I mean, we don't have that much time. You know, it's a long way. Uh, wow, wow. Uh. Um, you know, he had, most of you know the story, he had called twice a month and left a message on my answer machine. It was back in those days. I'd never returned any of his phone calls. Um, then he became friends. He proudly stated that he became friends with benefits, with one of my friends. And so then he started showing up in all the places I was hanging out, and I got to see, like, oh, he's, he's cool. He's still not for me, but he's kind of cool. And then we became friends, like real friends, not with benefit friends. And um, it was interesting because I knew he liked me, but he was very respectful and just patient, almost like he knew something that I didn't know. And I was like terrified. I never, I, I'm kind of a weird chick. Y'all probably know that after my Pilates ball story. But like I always had this idea that men hold me, would hold me back. So I went out in life and found all the men that would hold me back. Like I had blinders on to the rest of the world of great men because I only thought men hold me back. So that's what I pulled in. So was he trying to hold you back at that time or no, was he pushing you back? My, 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 opening, my opening was probably wrong because I said, look, People's lives change around me. He did. That was my that. opener. The first conversation that this we had. This is a bad opener, man. Don't try to use that opener. No, it was terrible. I was like, oh, God, he's like one of those Will you Hollywood take a shower guys. with me? Would have worked better. Shut up. Look at my tattoos right. and my criminal record. Would have worked better with her at that point. You got to know your customer. I was, I was a pretty Got to know your audience, chick. man. I was a crazy chick. There's my motorcycle. But, yeah, yeah. But eventually, I saw something that I had never, ever seen in a man before, which was... Like, this guy, like, there was something about me. Like, it couldn't have been the Poo Nanny because, I don't know, because, like, like he would have gone away by now. Like, there, I, it was just not happening. So he would have yeah, gone I, away. I think you guys really need to hear what she just said, right? A guy doesn't keep, predict, the guys in the room that want a good girl, a woman will submit to, a, to commitment. You know, I called my mom. I said, Mom, I met the girl I'm going to marry. And my mom's like, have you guys been out? I said, no. She doesn't want anything to do with me. And my mama said, she says, Grant, it takes two. And I hung up with her. I said, thank you so much for telling me that. I hung up with her. I said, oh, I know for sure I'm going to get her because it doesn't take two. It takes one. It takes one person to have a commitment. I, I didn't need her agreement. I needed to not back away from my own agreement. Whether it's an apartment deal I'm buying, Elena, whatever. Man, I make a commitment like... You know, I, I, you know, whatever it is, I'm committed. And, and then I, I just got to, I just got to work it out. Water beats a rock. <laughs> right. And that's what it was. And and I and I saw this committed man, who I was like, wow, I think this guy actually really like. There's something real here. Like he really likes me. I don't know why. I was a crazy weird chick. Now, were you telling her like, I love you, or I want to be with you, no, I want to marry you, I want to, like, no. I see a future no, no. with you, no. I'm gonna, you're going to have my babies? No. 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 
You weren't that committed in your language. I did. I was just, I, I'd call her up. I mean, I, I, I had every, every message I left. She didn't, she, I didn't talk to her. I left messages. You got to remember uh, mess, message machines? Of course you do. You grew up on them. So she was probably listening to the message live. I would call in. She, 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 she just didn't pick up, right? So I would leave a message. Hey, Grant here. I'm down in San Diego right now, you know, uh, sunset and just thinking about you. The next message would be a little different. Like I just, every time I just changed them, you know, saw you the other day over at, I'd start running into a proximity, right? It's all a sales cycle. So you're like, it, you got to close the proximity to the target, right? The closer you can get to the target, the closer the 10X brothers can get to me or to get to people that can help them. But it ain't going to happen in your living room. So when was the moment where you said, okay, yeah. this is the guy, like, he's, I'm in, like, he's convinced me that I'm well, committed it now. Was a, it was a weird moment, because it's so hard to describe, but we were um, at Le Petit Four on Sunset, you know Le Petit Four, and we were having dinner as friends, but all of a sudden it hit me, like, I was not drinking, but if any of you have ever drank and you've experienced a moment of being sober, and then the next minute you're like, oh my God, I'm drunk. It was like that, but with this thing that hit me, and I went, oh my God, at the table, and he looked at me and he said, what? And I said, you're gonna make me fall in love with you, aren't you? And he said, yes, yes I am. And I don't curse, but the next words out of my word, mouth, and I, I hope my kids aren't still here, but I went, oh, fuck. And we've been together. And we did. <laughs> Not that night. Not that and we did. Not that night, but we've been together ever since Wait, that night. So how long from the first moment you first saw her? First thing I thought was, all I got to do is get her, get her somebody's wedding. Who's getting married? <laughs> okay, because you always get laid at a wedding. So when, always works. When did, you fir when did you first meet Elena until that moment? How long was that time? It was like a year and... I would, I would have, look, I would have proposed to her that a night. A year and a half. A year and a half that it I, took for you to be like, oh, this guy's out of the friend zone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Interesting. And, 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 and also, you always say, get to know your, your customer or your audience. Well, because he was friends with my friend Erica is how he found out that I like to shoot. I told you the story yesterday. I was, every weekend, I was shooting sporting clay. And so he found that out, and he left a message on my machine. You see, because I'm so easy to, I'm like, I'm like so easy to protect. I'm like a, a honey on bee or whatever they, but he leaves a message and he says, hey, you know, I heard you like to shoot, da, da, da. I rented out the shooting range. It's usually closed on this, on this one particular day. But he's like, I rented out the whole range, and if you want, you can come with me. And I was like, that's the phone call that made me call him back. I was like, I'll do that. I'll have my 12 gauge with me and we can shoot some guns. Right, right. But that about it, but he can pay for it. I'm down. Oh, yeah, she was definitely going to just take advantage of me. It's true. It's true. I was like, okay. Yeah, that's great. I mean, when you're speaking to a potential customer, you're speaking to the vision of what they want for their life, it sounds like a lot. And you were speaking to her heart. So um, now fast forward, you guys get married, everything's happened. You know, you guys have two incredible kids that I'm aware of. I don't know if you have more, but you have two no, incredible kids, right? And um, I got the 10X brothers now. My kids. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Adopted kid. You've adopted the whole world. Yeah. Um, now, how has it been for you, Elena, to manage someone of his personality, of his uh, presence, of his energy? Because you're extremely strong, motivated, driven, independent woman yourself. How do you manage some, not manage, but how do you personally just navigate through that energy because it's a really powerful presence mm -hmm. and sometimes two powerful energies coming together can either elevate or explode. And, and, yeah, how, we've done and I'm sure you've had some moments of explosion, but how do you uh, continue to stay on top of that? Well, it's like um, Ed Milet's wife and I were speaking the other night when we first met and I was like, oh my God. Once I heard about you, I just, I knew we would understand each other from the get-go. And she and I said, you know, talking about these wild, crazy men and what it takes. And she said to me, she goes, because most people don't realize that we're the crazy ones to be with these crazy men. And when she said that, I was like, that made so much sense to me. You know, we're just crazy chicks who understand crazy men, and we're going to figure it out and make it work, 
and that's what we do. How, how have you made it work, though? I mean, how have you personally made it work? Well, you know, how long have you been together now? Now, 15 years. 15 coming, years. Up, coming up, I mean, yeah, the, yeah. 15 years, that's so, impressive. And when, when, we were, when we got together, like, I, we were, I was doing good, but I, like, not like we're doing now. Like, it's not even, it's a different zip code. It's, my sister hears me say all the time, my sister will call me up, how y'all doing? I said, man, we're about to make it. <laughs> me and Elena have this conversation all the time. I think, th I think we're getting on the cusp of, like, having a breakthrough. Last week, we said, when are we going to make it? When are we going to make it? Yeah. So, so, and so our life was a lot different 15 years ago. Yes. We were, we were running scared half the time, didn't know what was going to happen. And, uh, you know, when I went to Elena in 2008 and the Lehman thing collapsed and she's like, what do we do? I said, look, don't spend anything for anything for any reason. Nothing. Lockdown. Told her one time, one time. She didn't spend a penny. I didn't have to check on her. She just took it like, yes, got it. Mm. And we just put everything on super lockdown got through that cycle, like Gary was talking about, and then got on the other side of it, and we spent a lot of time working out where are we going, you know? So she's really good at dreaming. She talked about this yesterday. I don't know if you heard it or not, but she killed it, didn't she? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. If she was your favorite speaker, come on, blow it out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Was there ever a time where you guys felt like it's not going to work out? Like after three years, five years, ten years, last year, where you're like, you know what, this is almost too rough of a patch. Like, I don't know if we're going to make it. Or have you guys always said to yourselves, no matter what we go through, we're going to make it through together? Mm -hmm. I feel like there was a patch a few years ago. We're not allowed to say the D word, you know, divorce. We're not allowed to say that to each other. Threaten it, say she it. She said it twice. It. She no. broke twice. No, no, no. Let me she tell you the it story. Twice. You're lying. No, 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 no. You're lying. Don't I'll be a liar. You, a few years ago, a few years ago, I went to him and I said, I will give you one if you want one. If someone else can make you happy, I did not say I wanted one. I said, I will give you one. Wow. This one time, free of charge, you're out of the deal. But if you stay in, then you have to let me win at my game because I feel like I'm not winning right now. What was your game? What I do behind the scenes. I need to feel like I was winning. Like I, I didn't feel like I was winning. Like everything I did, I felt like it wasn't good enough. It wasn't right. It was, it was too much. It was too much for too long. And I was like, you know what? If someone else can do my job better, I love you so much. I'm, I'm actually willing to give you that. Wow. But if you choose it's to called stay, a switch. It's called a switch. And right I was there. like, look, I, you know what? You don't even have to clothes. give me half. You can have it. I love you. This but if you two years ago, three years. This is more probably. You know, I have, I have a war. We don't have a prenup, by the way. Just so that'd be a good question for you guys to ask. Okay, when I hooked up with her, there was no prenup. That's a story too. When right. we got Don, engaged, Donald Trump says you got to have a prenup. You ain't got to have anything. When we got engaged, got to have a commitment. Is what you got to have. That's right. We got engaged, she and then could he cheat on me. She could cheat on me. Are you gonna let her speak? No. She could cheat on me. She could cheat on me, and I wouldn't leave her. Say it again. She could cheat on me, and I wouldn't leave her. I wouldn't cheat on you. Because I think that if she cheated on me, it'd be my fault. I literally would think, okay, I caused that to happen. How, how did I? How did I not show her enough attention that she got bored and wandered off? I mean, it's just, look, you guys get hung up on the wrong stuff, man. We live on a we live on a messed up planet. People make mistakes. What did you have to do with it? That's what I learned from the Lehman collapse. When I got over the Lehman collapse, because I almost went broke in that deal. For me, going broke was like I was down to four million bucks. I'm like, dang, I just, I just had all my money destroyed. I, I had a, a, 20 years of knocking on doors and being conservative and saving cash, putting it away, and almost lost it. So I was like, I just watched all this work just go out. So I said, I'll never let that happen again, right? How did I do it? I didn't get better. We didn't start doing well until we took responsibility for what happened. Not to us, but what we did to make that happen. And we ignored it. So, so that, that's what she does good at. She's, she's very alert. You know, she's, she's like a hoot owl. <laughs> Stays up in a tree. She's not flying around showing off like an eagle. Mm -hmm. She's not killing anything. She's just up there. <laughs> Talks to animals, can get animals to do stuff. That was the secret. Okay. True then. 
you do. You, she, she's, got, she's got special powers. You guys, you guys have, you have magic. This is why everybody loved uh, Tim's story the other day. Because what he's saying is true. It's magic, man. You know, guys that make big money, they, they, they touch magic. They, they, they understand magic, not just effort. And Elena has taken the effort, the hammer that I have, and added the magic. And the two of them together, like, they're really powerful. When you guys aren't talking about business or money, because from the outside looking in, it looks like that's the main conversation all the time, just because that's the content you put out there on social media, things like that. What do you guys talk about when it's not about the business, the brand, making money, earning money, saving it? What conversations do you have? I'm like, uh, go. you know, that is mostly what we talk about. You know, you know why? Because we love it, and it's our interest, and we're trying to plot and go into the future and plan and where are we going and how can we help people and what can we do? So that is a big source of our conversation. Other I guarantee times? you, I guarantee you there's 10 charities. We raised more money last night in one night than that, that would put me on the first night of, a, of an opening of a foundation. There's celebrities that can't raise that much money, okay? There's celebrities that can't raise $1.9 million. TV star celebrities that can't raise $1.9 million in one night. I remember I... I talked to a guy named Scott Harrison who founded Charity Water, which is a big uh, organization. Some people know Charity Water. And I remember asking him, you know, what was a campaign that you did with a celebrity that did really well? This was about three, four years ago. And he said, I'll tell you the ones that didn't do well, because most of them don't do well. He said, Will Smith did a campaign where he did like a whole video on Facebook or YouTube or something, shared it out to his whole audience. He said they only raised like fifty or $60,000 from, you know, one of the biggest potentially actors in the world. Yeah. promoting it out, say, hey, let's raise money for this charity. Now, maybe if it was in a room and there was a different audience, it'd be different, but um, anyways. And, 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 that, and that's why we do talk about the money thing a lot because we're trying to help people, man. I can't do it without money. I have never been able to affect things. It always takes money. The 10X brothers, they ain't going anywhere without money, folks. The government's busted. California's busted. Illinois is busted, okay? I mean, Texas and Florida might be the only two solvent states in America. Nobody's going to tell you New York's. They can't tell, they can't tell people we are broke. What they do is raise the taxes, raise the parking fees, raise the tollways. They start raising stuff, right? We, we just know the reality of the situation, man. There, there's bad things on this planet. And, and so we're just, we're, we're not going on vacation. We're not talking about, oh, let's go take off. We are. We're going to go to Utah after this. We're going to go spend two weeks in the snow. I heard it. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. What makes you, Elena, feel the most yourself, the most alive when you do what and when Grant supports what? That makes you feel like you are the most incredible goddess in the world, like you are winning at everything, like you're, you'll never leave, like Such you are a good all guy, in. Like what's the thing that you need to do, because it's not all on Grant, <coughs> for yourself to feel that way, and then what does Grant need to do to support you in feeling that way? Well, I'm on this new mission now to make relationships cool. And, and I really want to help other people have what we have and figure out how to have it for themselves as a couple because I don't see enough of that out there. I don't see enough of the woman behind, beside, however you want to say that. Um, I don't see enough of those type women that would have helped me in the beginning of our relationship on just how to even be really in a really powerful relationship. So I have that purpose. I have our purpose. And then hobby-wise, like I, I, just, I just love my guns. And I just want to shoot when I have time off, when I've taken care of the family and we've taken care of our mission. And I just want to be able to go off and do that every once in a while. And when he lets me do that and take off and he'll watch the kids for four days while I sneak off to Fort Benning and shoot in the Army, you know. And I did the four days with the kids. I was terrified. I was like, can I do this? Can I even do this? Like, I was so scared I couldn't get them to, to school on the, at the right time or that I'd get lost on the way to school. Like, I became an incompetent, right? So I, I wrote the teachers, and I was like, just so you know, I'm out of town this week, so I don't know how their homework's going to show up. I don't know if they'll be in proper uniform. The dad's in charge. Text me or call me if you need anything. And, and it went fine, but, but I don't go on social media and say, hey, man, I was a good father for the last four days because I'm like what Grover said. Dude, I'm supposed to be a good father. 
like, like that's not something I'm going to go on social media and talk about. So, yeah. What's the thing that you need, Grant, every day to feel like I am fully taken bacon. care of? What's that? Just make some bacon for me in the morning. Have bacon in the refrigerator. Cut, cut the bacon out of the diet. Okay. Have ba- I, I, I went to the refrigerator one day. There's no bacon. And I just freaking lost my mind. <laughs> and here's the catcher. Damn. There was bacon in the freezer. Oh. Let me ask you this, Grant, because you said, you guys both said the D word is not in your vocabulary. Right. And it's, you guys are committed no matter what. Is there, if one of you were just pulling the other person down in some way and just like started to shift their energy and just started to shift and say, you know what, I'm not going to support you with the guns or you can figure everything out in your own life or you were telling Grant he's working too hard, you need to spend more time with me and don't go chase this anymore, let's just relax. Would there be anything that would be a deal breaker that you would say those would be deal breakers yeah. for me before before cheating would like a deal breaker for me would be like hey you can't you can't work this much i want to work man it makes me feel good to work how many of you love to work yeah yeah she can't i like to work more than i like to have sex i can last longer <laughs> i can last longer okay i can go i can go i can go like 3 and 4 days at a time man like like i can grind Guys talk about grind. These guys don't know what a grind is, dude. I can look at 7,000 units in two days, start at 5 o'clock in the morning, end up at 10 o'clock at night. Like, I can just grind it out and keep looking and just keep pushing through it. So if she said, hey, you can't do that anymore, I would definitely chop her head off. What is it that you, what is it that you say to Grant on a daily basis that maybe people don't know about? Maybe it's something you say before you go to bed at night. Maybe it's the first thing you say in the morning. Is there something that you do say that you think is really meaningful to your relationship and to his vision and speaking into his, who he is as a human being, how he's making an impact on the world and how he continues to build his business. Maybe he's not even aware of it, but you're doing it. Yeah, I have a very good answer for that. It's not anything very specific. It's, you know, the reason why I like the guns and this, now I'm doing this Muay Thai thing that I started two and a half months ago. No, not yet, but maybe in a year. Um, but I do those things because I'm practicing discipline and I, and I'm training myself to hit targets because I have big targets that I want us to hit. And these are targets that I can hit immediately, but more importantly, it's discipline when I don't want to do it, or if I have to take a shot or blah, blah, it's discipline. So the answer to that question is this, what do I do every day? When I'm, even when I'm mad at him, I will make him a meal. Even when I don't like him and I'm mad or upset, I will, when he walks in the door, I will say, hello, handsome, how are you? You know, I pra- and that takes discipline. You know, if I wasn't doing those things to challenge myself, I wouldn't like myself as much and I would take it out on him and he wouldn't get that, you know? We, 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 we've had, I think, two arguments in 15 years that lasted more than two days. We've had probably 20 that lasted a day, and the rest of them last less than 50 minutes. That's right. How do you negotiate ending a, uh, a conflict? How does, it, how does it work out? If you're fighting, what's the ending? The ending is usually just each person saying what they had to say, and I, I, I analyze whether it's something that I'm going to even remember in a week from now. Like, is it really worth, like, having to be right about it or just let it go because Grant is who he is and he's an animal and he's never going to think the way I think and I'm never going to get him. So if I just say it, I can let it go. What pulls me out of it is that I hold myself accountable um, to my word and to my actions. And if I want to be a power couple and I want to hit targets, I cannot waste time. I know how hard and how long it takes to hit a target. And if I'm going to waste time being upset, I might as well add time on the back end. And I don't want to do that. I want to get him on the Forbes list. I want 7 billion people to know his name. And I want that because I know he can help people. I'm there to help him and I'm there to support him. I'm not there to be a problem and to only think about myself. And, 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 and she said something yesterday about, uh, I forget what you said about the past yesterday, but like if you guys got that little nugget that she dropped about the past, there is, there is no benefit to you talking about what happened yesterday. Like there is zero payback. There is zero accomplished talking about what you did to me yesterday or when you did this. I, I'm, I'm extremely good 
at not doing that. I don't go back and tell her what she did wrong. I mean, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm bad at. I'm bad at so many things, it's unbelievable. But, <laughs> but I, I just don't bring up yesterday. And, and when we don't, we, we set our goals all the time, all the time. She, we're, we're, every Sunday we sit down and say, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? What are we what, doing? What type why of are goals? We going there? Financial goals, family well, goals. Well, why, 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 do we, why, do, why do we want to do the Forbes thing? Why do we want to buy a plane? What are we going to do with the plane, okay? What's the game? You don't want a plane. I know guys that are 50 times richer than me, they'll never buy a plane because they got no place to go. There's no mission for the plane, right? We didn't buy a plane because we want to show a plane off. It's stupid. Sits in a hangar, sits over there. We're going to use the plane, and we're going to go around meet the world. We're going to do a meet and around people. the world. So every Sunday you guys connect, whether it's a few minutes, yeah, yeah. and you just say, what's our goal for this week? Where are we going? It's pretty powerful. Why are we going there? Gives what you a mission here? as a couple, too, yeah. yeah. Now, for the, you know, I don't want to assume anyone's relationships in the audience, but for, for some of the men in the audience who maybe don't have – uh, a partner who thinks like you. Maybe they're just as driven or have a similar mindset as Grant. They're here. They want a 10X. Uh, and, and maybe some of them have partners that are super supportive and all in, and others, they're just not that personality type, but they've been married for 10, 20 years, and it's been challenging, and they feel like they got to sacrifice every now and then. How do you, what would you say to the men in the room who maybe have a partner who aren't as all in like you in their business vision on how to navigate because they love them, they don't want to get a divorce as well. Right. Are they sacrificing for their vision? How do they inspire their partner to? Th That's what I was gonna say. I, I've just, I've, we're, we're, I'm developing an online program Build an Empire, How to Have It All, um, in the final drafts of the book that's going to be given with this program. Yesterday, I could only talk about three things, purpose, same page, and know your roles. I have a whole, I mean, that covers from A to Z on everything that I've kind of learned and kind of figured out how to quantify that I think would be better coming from me rather than the guy who yeah. doesn't know. And then I have some guys who aren't really clear as to what they want. Like if there, some people come to me and they want another animal like them or they're, they want to motivate their wife because she's not an animal. And I'm like, that's different too because that's not what I do. But how do y'all get together and figure out your strengths and weaknesses and work together and let that person win in that role? So I have that. And then what were you going to say? No, I, you know, you guys, again, you got to know your audience. So the fact is, if you're having trouble at home, it's because you didn't have the conversation. You've been putting it off for years. It's, it's and a you hard might not be knowing how to have the conversation. We've covered a lot of topics on the G&E show. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. can they see the G&E show? Where can, you, where can they hear it? On the podcast? Is that yeah, where you're they, sending they, them? They, they, yeah, well, you, yeah, you find it online. But let me just say... I thought uh, you let, were me, let me just them. let me let me just say this. You guys need to have the hard conversation. You need to confront the beast. You need to what? Confront the beast. This is what I talked about. Be obsessed or be average. Confront the beast. There's a beast in the room. You need to say, hey man, look, we got to sit down and talk. Not I know the person, people. That, the, the top, the conversation. The conversation. You, the, yeah, you're the, not, the conversation y'all never have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not the person is a beast. But and the, the sooner, right. the sooner you handle the the the, like, quit bullshitting each other and say, hey. We haven't had a conversation that we got to have. Because your marriage isn't going to get better if you don't have that conversation. It's going to get worse. It's going to get old. It's going to get tired. It's just going to drag you down. It's going to kill your dreams. It's going to, like, you got to look at what, what, if we don't talk about this, like, we both carry. Right? We know. We are not supposed to admit that. I will not we, um, admit to that. I'm, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't, no, we, we carry. I, if, if, if I'm out in public, I'm probably carrying, Okay. Okay, so, so I'm not carrying right now because <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that at Mandalay. But, but I know that when I'm in Starbucks with my kids, I know that something could happen in that Starbucks. I don't want that to happen. I don't, I don't want bad stuff to happen. And I'm the one that told her, dude, you need to carry. You need to, figure, you need to be strapped and ready. You can't have a bodyguard with you everywhere you go, right? You have to be ready. You guys got to be ready in every area of your life. So, so in your marriage, if this person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with is that important, and you're going to build something together, because if you're not going to build it together, you're going to tear it apart together. Mm. Right. 
then you, gotta, you just got to have the conversation. I want to ask, how much time do we have? Two minutes. I want to ask you a personal question, if that's okay. Feel free to answer or not, but I'm curious. How important, and I don't know if your kids are around, but how, uh, how important is uh, the bedroom mm. activities? Um, and even More though, important to her than even though he, Even though Grant can't last as he long. Loves that stuff, man. She's even, crazy. Even, I'm the romantic. Even though Grant can't last as long in that department as he can in, in business. He's just fine in that uh, department. How, uh, Say it again. He's just fine. Oh, that's good. In that department. I'm sure he is. Yeah. How, how important is it? How important, how important is up, that? Tear it up, dog. She called me a beast. She said he's an animal. She meant every word of it. 10X has got a whole new meaning right there. Why did you get him going? Get, turn the mic off. He's going to get stripped tear, out. I'll tear it up. All you ladies out, let me, i tear it up. How, how important is that for you guys' uh, connection I, I, and I will, how I often? I will tell you this only because it's you guys. I, I did not mention this on stage. It's very important to me. Um, some people know be, only because you have told them. But in the 15 years that we have been together, I have never denied him sex for under any reason. It, it's not because I'm afraid he's going to go off and be with somebody else. It's because I know what the world is like. I came from the, the movie industry. I don't like rejection. I don't ever want anyone to reject me, and I would never want to reject the person I love. So I, She's I, never used headaches or cramps. Oh, wow. <laughs> never. She's never said, I'm, I got a headache, I got cramps, and never said, I don't feel like it. Wow. Because Which is pretty phenomenal. Well, I'm Not one time in 15 years. Yeah. I love him, so it's not like it's now, difficult. Now, you don't have to answer this, but I'm curious. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm thinking from the perspective of their, what they oh, might no, be thinking. No, that's good. So, I like it, man. Go deep, um, though. I do. How? Stop <laughs> it. Seriously, how do you manage it, right? How do you manage it? No. Um, crazy. How, how often does it need to be <laughs> for you guys to feel connected? <laughs> Sorry. No, dude, if you're going to ask the question, ask it, man. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't tiptoe bitch around it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just curious to know, like, because I'm not married. I haven't been together for 15 years and, you know, yeah. in a marriage. So how, how frequent does it need to be for you guys to have that type of intimacy for you to feel like we're in it? And is there, if it's too, too long where you haven't been in that intimacy where you're like, you know what? Every marriage is going to find its, For like, you guys personally. Wow. Yeah. Like, like you, you just look up one day and you're like, wow, I haven't had sex for a week. Has it been two weeks? Like... And, and that's fine. If I, if I find ourselves in that situation, like, you know, we just, it's not like something like you haven't, it's, it just is like, oh, and then it just happens, you know. Or sometimes it just might be more frequent in one week. It's just, it never occurs to me. It's just whenever, it just occurs. Dude, if you know? there's one sex scene, if she sees one sexual scene on TV, for sure she's going to want to have sex that night. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, on. it could just be a glimpse. It could be like a glimpse. I think it could be an ad of Fifty Shades of Grey. It could be an ad. I'm she'd not be like, oh yeah, movie, I'm going to fuck way. you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, final question for both of you because I want to wrap it up. Um, the thing you love the most about Elena, one thing you love the most. Yeah, I mean, she, she's a fantastic person. Like, like, she's just a great person. She, she, brings, she, she makes me much better than who I am by myself. She's you know, softens all the edges. She makes me look like a decent human being. Um, and, and she's always there for me, man, always. Like, you know, her scorecard's probably a 98. And that's what I always go back to. I'm like, okay, there's these two out points that's bothered me, but what's her, what's her, what's her report card? It's a 98. I mean, what she's done with those two kids I have, unbelievable. I don't know if they're mine. I know they're hers. And I know this, those kids are exceptional over there. It's not just because I'm their dad, they're exceptional. You meet them, you talk to them, they're exceptional kids. And she had more to do that with that than I did. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Give it up for that. And, and by the way, mothers, mothers are important, man. Yeah. Mothers are important. Fathers are important, but mothers are important too. Yeah. My, my mama made is probably responsible for a huge portion of who I am today. And, and the thing you love the most about Grant? The thing I love most about Grant is that um, he has a real love and commitment in his heart for me, the family, and the world, and he's genuine, and um, sometimes he might not present himself in 
the way I would want it presented, but I understand what's in his heart. And he sees no color, prejudice, race, gender, like all those, um, what are they called? Um, judgments. Or judgments. He does not have that. He, he really has the ability to look inside a person's heart and, and what's the hustle they have, that they have, and, and if you have that, you're in with him. And I love that he doesn't have any prejudices and he's willing to fight for not only me and the kids, which I've seen time and time again, but for you. Uh, and he really has a deep commitment to help others and it's very genuine and I, I really love that about you. Mm. Well, I love your guys' love together and I appreciate you both for what you represent. So let's give it up for the couple of the week and the year, Grant Thank and you. Elena Cardone. Thank you.